armature reaction of alternators. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define armature reaction in an alternator. Explain the effects of armature reaction for different power factor loads. During a power outage on a hot summer day, Mr. Kamal had to resort to his portable generator for power supply. Later, when he tried to beat out the heat by running his air conditioner, he observed the lights dimming, but when he turned it off, the lights glowed normally. The same happened when he tried to use his juicer mixer. That is, when Mr. Kamal became inquisitive to know why this low voltage occurs only when certain devices are turned on. Well, do you know why? It is because of certain phenomenon of any alternator which impacts the voltage produced by it. Let us learn about this phenomenon in detail. We have already seen that when a load is connected to an alternator, the armature carries a current and thus produces a magnetic field around it. Thus, the air gap contains two fluxes. One, due to the field winding known as main flux, that is, Phi F, and the other due to the current carrying armature, that is, Phi A. The resultant flux pattern in the air gap is changed due to the interaction of the armature flux on the main flux. This effect of the armature flux affecting the main flux distribution pattern and its magnitude in the air gap is called as the armature reaction. We can see that the armature reaction depends on the current in the armature which produces the armature flux. Thus, the armature reaction is also dependent on the different power factor of the connected load, which decides the phase change of the current drawn by it. Let us analyze the effects of the armature reaction in an alternator for various power factor loads such as unity power factor load, leading power factor load and lagging power factor load. Let us consider an alternator connected to a purely resistive load that is a load with unity power factor. Also draw its phasor diagram. Let us take the main flux in the machine phi F as a reference. The voltage induced in the armature EPH due to this flux phi F lags behind it by 90 degrees. A current IAPH flows in the armature in phase with the voltage EPH driving it due to the connected load. This current produces a flux phi A which is also in the same direction as that of the current IAPH producing it. From this phasor diagram, we can see that the armature flux phi A lags behind the main flux phi F by 90 degrees. Representing the main flux and armature flux in a waveform, we can see that under the left half of the north pole, the main flux and armature flux both are in positive quarter cycles in the same direction. Hence, they assist each other. But under the right half of the north pole, they are in positive and negative quarter cycles respectively. Hence, they oppose each other. The same is the case under the south pole, where for the left half, the fluxes assist each other. Whereas for the right half, they oppose. Hence, the average flux in the air gap remains constant, but the resultant flux distribution over the pole faces will not be even. This effect of the armature reaction for a unity power factor load resulting in distortion of flux in the air gap is called as the cross magnetizing effect. Hence, the unity power factor loads cause cross magnetizing effect of armature reaction in the alternator. Let us find out what happens when a purely capacitive load is connected. When an alternator is connected to a purely capacitive or a zero leading power factor load, the armature current, that is IAPH, leads the induced EMF, that is EPH, driving it by 90 degrees. Hence, the flux phi A produced by that current also leads the induced EMF, that is EPH, by 90 degrees. 
Thus, both the main flux and armature flux are in the same direction. The waveforms of the same are displayed on the screen. From the waveforms, you can observe that both the main and the armature fluxes are in the same direction under each pole. Thus, they assist each other and result in the addition of fluxes, which is the resultant flux in the air gap. This increased flux leads to increase in the EMF induced in the armature, which results in an increase in the terminal voltage. Such effect of the armature reaction, which results in the addition of the fluxes in the air gap, is called as the magnetizing effect. Thus, we have seen that the pure capacitive load results in the magnetizing effect of armature reaction. Let us see what happens when a pure inductive load is connected to the alternator. When an alternator is connected to a purely inductive or a zero lagging power factor load, the armature current, that is IAPH, lags the armature induced EMF, that is EPH, by 90 degrees. Hence, the flux produced by that current also lags the voltage by 90 degrees. Thus, both the main flux and armature flux are exactly in opposite directions. The waveforms of the same are displayed on the screen. Thus, from the waveforms, you can observe that the armature flux tries to cancel the main flux under each pole. This leads to reduction in the average flux in the air gap. This decreased flux leads to decrease in the EMF induced in the armature, which results in a considerably large drop in the terminal voltage. Such an effect of the armature reaction for a zero lagging power factor load resulting in the reduction of the flux in the air gap is called as the demagnetizing effect. For not so purely lagging power loads, the armature reaction is partly demagnetizing. Thus, we can quench Mr. Kamal's inquisitiveness. As the loads he turned on were inductive with lagging power factor, it leads to the demagnetizing effect of the armature reaction, resulting in the drop of the alternator voltage, causing the lights to dim. Summary This brings us to the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you have learnt about armature reaction in an alternator. Effects of armature reaction for different power factor loads.